being today November Friday the 13th I thought that we needed a special video not just any noir today but a movie that would send chills down our spines and for that purpose I chose The Night of the Hunter released in 1955 and directed by Charles Lawton Ben never told you he'd throw it in the river, did he? I can hear you whispering, children, so I know you're down there feel myself getting awful mad. Here is all the passion and suspense, the heart-pounding warmth of the best-selling novel that gripped millions. Wake up! Come on! Superb, unforgettable performances by an extraordinary array of talent. As many of you would know, The Night of the Hunter was the first and only film that British actor Charles Lawton ever directed and it is so unusual and so brilliant that it is no wonder that it influenced and continues to influence many artists and many filmmakers up to our days it is a cult movie whose following has grown and grown exponentially decade after decade and i think it is today unanimously considered a masterpiece. As many of you would know as well, it is yet again an unusual but happy combination of a film noir, of a gothic fairy tale, of a children's nightmare, even of a biblical parable, a horror story. It is many things united by expressionist sublime visuals, writing, acting, and direction. From its very first scene, the movie does start as a fable or a fairy tale with the solemn voice of Lillian Gish, a magnificent presence that will infuse the night of the hunter with a quality, with a serenity, in the midst of this eerie nightmare of good versus evil, of light versus darkness, of love versus hate. As I was saying from the very first scene, the movie starts as a cautionary tale in which we follow the lives of two young children during the Great Depression. The story, which was based on a novel by Davis Grubb, is pretty much a dark tale of what those years were, of the deeply rooted fear that the lack of money, the desperation entailed. And what a better way to talk about fear than through the eyes of children who represent that primal fear that everyone, even as adults, can easily and quickly relate to. And even though it is a tale again about preachers, nightmares, it alludes again to all that background of money, fear, desperation, failure, infused with a series of myths that are very much rooted in US and American culture, such as Mark Twain's vision of the South, folk tales again, fairy tales. We can find all of that in The Night of the Hunter, a movie that was directed by a British actor, but in an interview, with Guillermo del Toro, he points out that quite like Hitchcock with A Shadow of a Doubt, also a British man, both Lawton and Hitchcock were able to identify and bring to the surface those shadows lurking. And it feels also to me a bit like Douglas Sirk with his melodramas. He also dabbed into America's nightmares and what was lurking behind that poster perfect image of the American dream. I haven't personally read, but from what I've research, it seems that it was indeed also a brilliant literary piece. The screenplay of The Night of the Hunter was by James Agee, who was a newspaper man, also a novelist himself, who had also adapted The African Queen for John Huston. In the case of The Night of the Hunter, it seems that his adaptation of Davis Grubb novel was, shall we say, a bit too thorough and much too extensive. From what I've heard, especially from Robert Mitchum himself, it's pretty much the work of Charles Lawton who reworked that lengthy screenplay into what we ultimately see in the movie. And it seems also that upon its publication, it was in fact 
Paul Gregory who approached Charles Lawton upon reading The Night of the Hunter. And initially, it seems that Charles Lawton's intention was to play the part of the preacher himself. The producer, though, told him that it would be impossible for them to fund a movie like this if he was the protagonist. So instead, they turned to Robert Mitchum. And it was, again, the producer who insisted on Charles Lawton being the director of this film adaptation because he had loved the book so much. Even though Charles Lawton again had never directed a film, he turned to the work of David Ward Griffith who is nowadays a very controversial figure as an inspiration for The Night of the Hunter. The idea to cast Lillian Gish in fact comes from that. The role of Lillian Gish in The Night of the Hunter as Rachel, the only protector the children have, is one that is really iconic. Her image being on the porch with a rifle and singing. I think that is one that it's forever ingrained in my memory ever since I first watched The Night of the Hunter as it is also her voice, as it is also Robert Mitchum's voice and singing which is also quite beautiful even though it's equally haunting and he is, aside from Lillian Gish, another great fantastic asset of The Night of the Hunter. Even though on paper Charles Lawton and Robert Mitchum couldn't seem more different. They in fact had a great affinity working together in this movie. So much so that Robert Mitchum would go on to say that out of all the directors he worked with, Charles Lawton was his favorite. Also Lawton praised Robert Mitchum even though again they seem to come from different worlds. Lawton went on to say that Robert Mitchum was one of the best actors in the world. He talked about Mitchum being a person who offered an image of his persona that was very different from the man he actually was. They were in fact very much at ease with each other. They really understood one another and it seems it pretty much was the same for practically all the members of the cast. Also Shelley Winters who does another fantastic performance here. I think that the only ones Lawton had a bit more trouble working with were the children, something that Hitchcock was also very cautious about. Cinematography once again as always but quite importantly in this movie is a key component of the influence, the enduring influence that this movie has. It is a highly symbolic movie. Again, the visuals, the photography, the frames are essential for that. It is something that executives and audiences back in 1955 didn't understand. This movie was a total failure at the box office. Also because, to be fair, as I've heard the original producers say, United Artists did nothing to promote it. So a year in which the seven year itch to catch a thief, revel without a cause, or picnic just to name a few, were released. The Night of the Hunter fell into oblivion. I digressed from the subject, but I wanted to mention the role of Stanley Cortez, a cinematographer of this movie, and working of that high contrast and lights and shadows that this movie has, and also art director here, Hilliard Brown, who had worked a year before in another fantastic movie such as A Creature of the Black Lagoon and who also raved about Charles Lawton's vision and also the music which I haven't mentioned that much to be fair these days is key. In this case it was composer Walter Schumann who made the score lyrical, poetic, eerily beautiful, scary. Sadly though as I was saying the fact that it was a box office failure prevented Charles Lawton who was again very unsure of his work from ever directing another movie and I wonder how he would react to the fact that even nowadays we are still talking about the night of the hunter and praising it but as Lillian Gish would recite you will know them by their fruits. It is yet again a movie that we could be analyzing and talking about for hours on end. So for a day like today, Friday 13th, I highly highly recommend that you watch The Night of the Hunter. So again that's all I have for you for today's video. As I did last week, I'm going to pause 
during the weekend from publishing videos just in order to be able to carry on with the movie challenge and talking about a movie each day so thank you so much for joining me today thank you so much for sharing the love for classic movies and for film noir and i hope that you stay safe Take care, have a wonderful weekend, and see you all next week with another film noir classic. Much love, bye.